Uh, so my next point here is going to be about blocking schemes um, on among the or along the offensive line. And this one's pretty simple. We probably don't need to spend a lot of time on this. But as we've seen uh, with some of these elite pass rushers in the NFL right now, I'd say we're actually in a golden age of pass rushers uh, in real life. Uh, teams need to adjust their game plan accordingly to who's on that defensive line or um, the, the outside linebackers as well. If you're playing a team like Chicago, who's got Khalil Mack, obviously, out there at outside linebacker. Um you know, it, you can't really tell your line specifically, we need to double this guy. You can make adjustments. Uh, you can put a tight end on that side. You can try and ID that guy. You can slide the protection. More often than not, it will work. But when you need it the most uh, and it's third and 12 and they're going to rush three people, I've seen it way too many times where I try these things. I try to slide towards Aaron Donald or Khalil Mack, and I still somehow end up with my right tackle, who in some situations might be the worst player on my offensive line, and I, I recognize that he needs help. I'll try to slide towards that player, and I'll still end up getting one-on-one. -on -one. And just from someone that, that wants to make these realistic adjustments and, and game plan against a specific opponent, it's something we talk about all the time, it just you know, dealing with scheme-specific, player-specific adjustments, making uh, authentic experiences when you play different teams, this is just a biggie for me. Well, to that point, I mean, like you said, these are things that if they happened in real life would really threaten a coach's job. If you don't think that when a team game planned for the Raiders or for the Bears, Khalil Mack didn't get circled. If you think that teams don't circle J.J. Watt when they face the Texans, you're not going to have, even with a good lineman, those guys get singled. It's just not going to happen. You're going to have a halfback into check. You're going to have a tight end over to chip. And you're going to have at least some idea of, okay, we're going to double team this guy. We can single everyone else. And as you mentioned, you get to these not even critical game situations. I think it's more visible in a critical game situation because third and 17, who's going to single J.J. Watt? Nobody. You know, you're going to make sure someone else can sack me, but it's not going to be J.J. Watt. You know, to that point, you know, you don't see a lot of his skill set coming through either with the swats. I mean, he shouldn't be the only one doing it. But when was the last time you saw J.J. Watt swat down a pass at Madden? For me, it's been a really, really long time. So when you don't have those players giving their true to life threats, if you have a six foot seven defensive tackle, he should swap balls down better than a six foot one defensive tackle. Just saying. At least try. I mean, at least try. Like you know, I know they put their hands up, and I know it's a low percentage, but I also know that JJ Watt's percentage is pretty good. I, I don't call me on this, but I, I think he had maybe eight, eight, ten knockdowns this season. You could go through a season of Madden and and, and see him not get any. And in a defensive interior lineman get 10. It, it just, you know, some of the things just don't make sense. And it boils down to just things, you know, we're not talking about things that are there. I think that's the most frustrating point. We're not talking about things that are there that just need to be refined. We're talking about things that are non-existent, th things that have to be implemented from the ground up. Yeah, it, it completely. I'm just pulling up my PFF stats. Looks like JJ Watt was uh, up there for SWATs, by the way. <laughs> Give me a number. I, I said eight. <laughs> well, the, the league leaders were uh, Carlos Dunlap and Emmanuel Ogba, both lengthier guys. JJ Watt, actually only three on the season, but he is perennially um, up there. A little bit of a down year for him, but. Yeah, I gave him, I spotted him five. That's okay. You, you can spot JJ. Well, he, you know, what do you do? I guess for all those people, for all those people, it'll hey, be you're like a Colts fan. You don't, you don't care about JJ Watt. I listen. I'll tell you right now. You can, you can tell me I don't watch or know about football. I'll tell you. I in the in the wild card game, I felt like JJ Watt had eight swats. Right. I it might not all have been him, but I could have swore he at least had two in that game. So when I was doing math in my head, I was like, well, if he had two, I know the stats don't roll over. I think like if he had two in one game, you know, he probably had eight for the year. But. Well. <laughs> 
He, he's pretty good at it. Hey, Moving on you're, you're, to your- You're right. Two two batted balls in the wild card round. Five on the season if you was count I? those two. There you go. See, so I wasn't too far off. I was just working but, a regular season. 